Hey, so in this video, I will show you how to build the voice AI agent using Vapi. So we'll be giving ourselves a phone call and then we will be retrieving the recording and the transcript of the conversation, which we will then update into a Airtable database. So it might sound complicated, but it's pretty really easy. So here is what we are going to cover. First of all, we will create a, a workflow, then we are going to create a form, we'll see how we, do, we are going to pass the data, and how are we going to get the call transcript. So first of all, you need to head over to uh, vapi.ai, create an account, and then you need to create an assistant. So basically to create an assistant, you just need to create, uh, to, to click this button, to create the assistant and choose a blank template. Here we could create an appointment setter or a customer support um, uh, AI agent, voice AI agent, or we could get the uh, agent to answer questions. There is a lot you can do. So in regards to appointment setters, for instance, I connect mine to uh, Go High Devop. So it looks for available slots and then uh, offers available slots to leads and books it straight into the calendar. So that's really, really cool. So I'm just going to uh, create it so that uh, we can we can actually uh, do it from scratch. So here I've created Emily V3. So I like to name mine Emily. I don't know why, but they're all called Emily. Uh, so the first message is this, uh, okay, that's gonna be Hello, uh, I'm, em I'm Emily and I want to tell you a joke. So here, as you can see, I'm passing a, a variable. So there is nothing complicated here, but it makes the, uh, the tool really, really powerful. For instance, I've built one for a solar company and within which we are passing the, the payback time, uh, the uh, investment, etc., etc., etc to hook the lead into the conversation and then to get them to book a call. So here we are going to uh, give it a prompt. So that's going to be just a simple one. That's going to be uh, uh, tell this person a joke about. And here we are going to write a variable to. And uh, that's going to tell us a joke about that. So next, we will just configure it. So I'm just go going to leave it as such. You can fiddle with it, but I'm going to be using OpenAI, GPT 3.5, Turbo Cluster. I'm not going to connect a knowledge base and I won't touch the temperature. Here you can see that's going to cost eight cents per minute. And the answers are going to be a little bit long. It's uh, 600 milliseconds. So uh, if you if you tweak it, you can actually reduce this down. So I'm going to be using DeepGram, and the um, the transcribe uh, will the transcript will be in English. Sorry, I'm going to be using the uh, Cartesia voice, but you could also connect even eleven labs if you wanted to, or even OpenAI. They work really well. I'm just going to leave it as such. So I'm not going to be using functions, even though they are. it makes those bots like super powerful. And this I will just leave it as such. Now I will, I will publish it. Now, as a next step, I will want to save the uh, uh, assistant ID. Uh, so I will also head over to phone numbers and I will copy the, uh, the actual ID of the, that phone number. So I recommend that you have um, uh, a different VAPI account per client and connect their own phone numbers into it. So I'm just going to use mine for, for the sake of this um, example. As a next step, you'll want to uh, head over to the uh, API documentation. Uh, so that's dot, dot, .vapi .ai, And you are going to create, um, uh, click on create core. And here you will just want to uh, click and um, to in order you you want to click play in order to be uh, to see putain c'est pas vrai so 
So So here after you've clicked apply you will see a screen like this one and so here you'll want to uh, head over to the uh, uh, assistant so after you've clicked apply you will see a screen like this one and this is really convenient you will need to uh, code or do anything but copy and paste so here you'll have your uh, token ID, we can do that later. So you, you don't need it for now, you only need it if you're going to test it inside this playground. Next, you'll want to um, choose the assistant ID. So that's mandatory, we are going to use the, uh, so if you've used an assistant, this is mandatory. So we are going to copy this value and paste it in here. Next, we are going to click Assistant Override and here we are going to select the uh, variable values and here we've defined the first name. I'm just going to put my name in there. And we've also defined one called Joke. And so let's say a uh, joke about food. I don't know <laughs> what is it going to come up with, uh, but anyway, it's in there. Uh, next, I want to add the phone number ID, and so that's the, the phone, phone number ID that we have in here. I'll just paste it. And next, obviously, we will want to add a, a phone number to which the, the phone call will go to. Uh, so this is... Uh, where did it go? Ah, it's here. And that's number. And here I'm just going to put my own phone number for, for the sake of testing. So here you see we have a request that looks like this one. So at this stage, all we need to do is to copy, head over to um, N8N. So I will just create a, a new one. New workflow so that we can we can actually do it from scratch. HTTP request import curl import. Okay, and now I have my uh, requ request made. I will just need to add my API key. So I will just pause the video and do that. Okay, so now I've um, anchored the API key. I'm just going to press the play button. So this uh, runs successfully. So my phone is actually ringing. I am Emily and want to tell you a joke. Okay, so that's working. So now we need to uh, get this uh, ID here and actually place it inside um, Airtable database uh, so that when we um, make the get call to retrieve the transcript we will use this id to identify the actual transcript so uh, to identify the actual call so here we have uh, uh, just a, a simple database i will just remove this field one too. I'll remove this one too. And I'll just add another one that's going to be long text long text transcript. Okay. So I'll head back over to um, 
and make a uh, table. Now I'm going to create a record. I choose my credentials. Choose the right table. is only one so that's going to be easy and here instead of the name I will just drag and drop this field so that's going to be the uh, the ID and I'll just play it and if I head back over into a uh, air table I have my ID here next I'll create a form so that I can actually make the values here the, the variables uh, real values uh, so uh, I'm going to go and select uh, uh, a form submission trigger and I will create a simple, very simple form. Form submission, so that's going to be called VAPI test. What's your name? So we need. I will save it and I will actually connect it to the. Uh, I'll connect it after. Uh, I'll just test it first, then pass the data and connect it with the right data. So I'll test it. I'll say check. My phone number is plus three three six eight one six, and I want the block to be about food. I submit it. Okay, so now the data came through. And so at this stage, all I need to do is to connect the node and replace those variables. So here I'm going to replace the first name by this one. Let's put it, put it into the right place. So if it goes to the bottom like that, you just need to copy and paste it. Easy enough. Okay. And it remember. I will save it. I can delete this one. And let's say I want to test it again. submitted and here there is a problem so what's the problem so I've just fixed it the problem was actually the country code so I've just added plus three three here so that's uh, that was really easy enough and now it's working perfectly so if I just update this field, um, that's actually going to create a new row. I could have it updated, but that's uh, working perfectly. So I just delete the empty ones. And here as the next step, we'll want to retrieve the content of the call. So we will retrieve the transcript. In order to get the transcript, there are a couple of ways to uh, to do it that I will just show you. Now we are going to want to create a new workflow. So this workflow is going to be actually getting the transcript from the uh, VAPI API and then uh, updating it into Airtable. 
So to do that, you need to create the workflow, name it, and then you need to uh, use a wait step. So there are many ways to do it, but we'll just use, uh, use this one because that's the easiest one to understand. So this is going to wait five minutes, and then this is going to push the data into the next workflow. So those five minutes should allow for the phone call to be finished and the transcript to be processed. Where, as I've mentioned, we could do it in a few different ways. That's the easiest one to start with, the easiest one to understand. So let's go with that one. So here it's really important to understand the data structure inside the execute workflow because this is what we are going to use in the next workflow. So here this is going to be using fields name. Uh, so just so you understand, this record ID matches the record ID of the row we've created in Airtable and the field ID matches the uh, field ID that we've updated inside this field here. So those are the values coming from Airtable. Uh, so it's always coming from the, the last node, by the way. This is, uh, can be a little bit tricky. Next, uh, we are going to uh, uh, our new workflow, the one that's going to uh, get the, da the data and uh, update it in, in inside Airtable. So I'll just show you uh, an execution uh, so that you, you can understand. Uh, here we, uh, we have the... Uh, so I need to close that so that you can see what's inside the uh, start node. So here you can see we have fields name. So that means we will uh, we need we will need to uh, to use that in that specific form in order to get the right call and the right call ID. Uh, so it's updating on the name column and this is using the uh, JSON ID. So coming from this wouldn't open yeah uh, so this is this is updating on the on the call id here uh, so let me just show you uh, what that looks like inside the editor and a, a couple of things that you need to pay attention to uh, so when you are using an update node uh, in an 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 for a table by default it will give you the id you need to remove that you re really don't need it and uh, you just need to uh, drag and drop the values from the, the previous node. So this is it. And that we need to remove it. Status, we will remove it. In fact, I recommend removing any fields that you don't need because sometimes NAN will add weird, weird stuff in there and it might get the uh, workflow to, uh, to break. And here I will just test it. I'll pause the video while waiting. And here, as you can see, I have the transcript for those 82 conversations. Uh, obviously, if and uh, it keeps populating. So uh, uh, if I only had uh, one phone call in there and using the uh, ID to match the phone call ID, uh, it would just come up with one. So, and you can obviously uh, make a lot of things out of it, like for instance, you can analyze the transcript or you can uh, analyze the conversation summary and then trigger new workflows and uh, it's the possibilities are really, really endless. So I hope you've enjoyed these videos. As usual, if you want the template, you just need to head over to the school community, they will be in there. And if you um, enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to uh, uh, smash the like button. That would really help the channel and uh, uh, motivate me to make more videos like this one. Thank you. Bye-bye.